What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be looking at another instruction within the RS Studio 5000 environment in a PLC programming in a ladder logic. So the instruction I'm referring to is the CTD or as more commonly referred to the countdown. Um, the countdown. So here you have the instruction right here, the count CTD countdown. And as you can see, I have a couple of examples for you just in the like in the previous videos. So the countdown is going to be very similar to the count up, of course, as the name would suggest. And if you haven't watched that video, it's going to be on your screen right now, feel free to do so. But let's jump into the examples. So on my first rung, all I have is the countdown instruction tied to an XIC, which is going to be this system underscore underscore Boolean as zero. And as soon as I toggle this instruction, as you would expect, the accumulated value of the countdown timer will go down, it will remain on that value until a transition back to low to high is seen uh, in front of the countdown instruction. And of course, this is true if you had multiple XICs XIO before the countdown. Um, now on my second run, I have this very interesting uh, logic, which is essentially looking for this accumulated value of our counter do notice that it's the same counter system underscore counter zero, the accumulated value to be less than one, which is of course zero or anything, uh, a negative integer. So what happens is, since the PLC continuously scans this logic, as soon as this accumulated value becomes zero, this move is this move instruction is executed. And what this move instruction does is essentially put this num it puts this number 10 into the accumulated value. So observe what happens after I uh, toggle this boolean back and forth. And as you can see, we can reach this, uh, we can reach this uh, less than one, or essentially we make this true and then a move occurs and we move this 10 into the accumulated value of our counter. And essentially this is shown here as well. So very, very cool. This is used in the, I've seen this used in this fashion before where you have, you know, something which counts down, but then there's a move instruction which executes the uh, actual reset of the timer. So if you do not remember in the previous video, I've used a reset instruction in order to reset the counter. Now here it's a little bit different I'm doing a move so this also means that the done bit do notice that the done bit never actually unlatches so it might be uh, confusing to some but it does make sense in certain applications so in this case of course I would not necessarily look for a done bit but I would look for a condition as to where this uh, accumulated value is less than and here uh, I did mention that less but it's less or equal to so it's an LEQ instruction versus an LES and I'll change that to an LES, compile the whole thing, and then it should be, sorry, this should be less than one. So let's just try that one more time. So one, it, everything is good, everything's fine. As soon as we toggle that one more time, it goes back to that 10 value as explained before. Let's move on to the second example. So the second example is a little bit more complicated. Let's examine rung by rung as to what we have going on. So in the first rung of this example, I have essentially a Boolean, which is the conditional to execute both of these timer delays. Um, and each one of these timer delays, it's one of these branches. So this is branch one, this is branch two. In the first branch, as long as the timer is not done, which is uh, of course, a condition which tells you that the timer will continuously run if that is if everything is true, then it will count up to a thousand, which translates to a single second in the real world. So do remember that the timers are in milliseconds. And you have a separate system timer one, which is also going to be on its own, not done bit. And that's going to be counting up to four seconds in real time or 4000 milliseconds. Now in the next rung, for this example, what I've set up is essentially whenever uh, either one of these counters reaches or e either one of these timer reaches a critical value close to the ending point, then the system will out either count up or count down. So in case of the timer, which is system timer zero, the system would count down in case of the other timer, which is four 
seconds the system would count up now this is a very interesting uh, scenario and it essentially causes a what's a co what's called an electronic tug of war and you could see pretty much what is going to happen so the accumulated value of the same counter is going to be pulled in either direction now this is not something which is very common but could come useful in certain applications and it certainly doesn't hurt to know how to implement a, such a structure um, but essentially what will happen is if this timer reaches this value then the counter value accumulated will increase if the sorry it will decrease and if it reaches this value then of the other timer then the value would uh, increase now there's of course uh, a little bit of logic that you should always implement when you're working with something like this and I have a single rung which is essentially because uh, my timers are very static I'm not using you know I could be using proxies for example I could be using detection systems on a uh, particular system then I don't necessarily I know exactly where that time where that value is going to go because my timer here of course is much faster than the timer here it's going to count down uh, quicker than it's going to count up nevertheless if you do want to implement this with sensors you should implement a higher and lower limit right here I'm showing you I'm showing you only the lower one so if the system is running and the accumulated value is less than 50 meaning that this uh, as you can see this is the current state so the accumulated value 49 is of course less than 50 therefore the system has been overloaded and the system must be stopped so immediately if you try to start the system it's going to say that yes your accumulated value is less than 50 or what is the uh, bottom limit and it's going to unlatch the system uh, system start bit so right now essentially if I try to toggle this bit I simply can't because it immediately unlatches it based on this logic and let's look at um, how to reset our system so if you're an operator or somebody who wants to reset the system let's say you want to set this accumulated value to 100 and of course you can have a button that does that uh, then you are free now to start the system all over again and what is happening let's observe the application here so as I've said the countdown happens every single second and the count up ha happens every four seconds so essentially both of these uh, instructions are fighting over the same counter uh, and effectively every uh, every four seconds it goes down by three sorry it goes down by two because you have uh, no so it, it does go down by a three because you have four countdowns and then one count up so it becomes by three and if it reaches this 50 you will notice that since the system is running as soon as it reaches less than 50 an overload or a conditional overload and of course we can unlatch this if, if the system starts we can unlatch this uh, as soon as the system reaches a critical limit and again you could have a upper and lower limit the system will stop and it will prevent anybody else from starting your system uh, due to um, that limit being reached so very very useful application um, although I have not seen it done in many many situations like this it does apply to certain cases so hopefully that explains the countdown instruction and how it works with the bit just like the count up it it's going it's going to have all the same bits that we've worked with uh, before such as the enable the uh, of course count up count down that's uh, significant to the counter but also the done the overload and the unlatch bit so do make sure that you uh, practice this on your own and let me know what you think in the comments section below thank you guys so much for watching my content if you have any questions on this topic make sure to leave them in the comment section below and if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye